Hi, I'm Lindsay Whitten. Welcome to the studio. Today in our first painting course, I'm just going to be talking about how to set up for uh, a painting. Just what you should do at the beginning to make sure you're all prepared, ready to get into the painting. So, the first thing you want to do is get all your supplies together. And obviously you're going to need the pastels, you're going to need some paper. So today I've got some my tents sanded paper. Whatever paper you're using, the setup is pretty much the same. So choose what colour you're going to work with. Uh, I'm thinking today we'll choose maybe, maybe this colour. So I'll put my other sheets aside. When you're painting with pastels, you want to have a little bit of bounce behind the paper so you don't want to put it onto a hard wood straight like this because there's no give in it so what I like to do um, is use a piece of foam core it's that's something you can get from art supply shops sometimes news agents have it too and I just use the thin one it's got a little bit of foam in between two sheets of uh, paper there take the paper pop it on now you need to attach it in some way so it doesn't move around as you're painting and there are two ways I do that if I'm just going to use this as a backing sheet and when I'm finished I'm taking the paper off and storing it flat without a backing sheet I'll use some masking tape this is one of those ones you can get from a paint shop that comes off really easy and is, is a delicate one sometimes the normal um, masking tape will damage your paper and when you take it off you'll rip a little bit of the painting which you don't want to do so I use the delicate one. A bit more expensive but works really well. If I'm going to, on the other hand, cut my foam core backing so it's going to fit into a frame eventually and I want to store my painting straight onto it, I'll use this framing tape and it's uh, just sticking it down around the, the four corners there. So for this one I'm just going to be taking it off. This is just to save on expense. I just use a backing sheet uh, which I reuse and reuse and store my paintings like this till I'm ready to frame them or they're purchased. So all we do is pop the tape along the four, four sides there. Alternate the sides in that way you don't get any problems with uh, buckling of the paper. Just use my fingers to tear it off. Here we go. Oops. The other thing this does is give you a nice clean edge around your painting when you're finished, which is nice. If you find you've got a little bit of buckle in it, which sometimes you do, all you need to do is, because it's masking tape, just lift it a little bit like that and, and smooth it down. So there we have the papers ready to use. If you don't have foam core, the easy way to do it is get uh, big sheets of newspaper, maybe four or five sheets of newspaper, tape them to your board, then tape your paper on top of that. And that'll give it a little bit of give. So my paper's ready. When you're uh, painting, you're going to create some dust. Now, when you're painting with pastels, you want to have your paper straight up like that so the dust falls down. When I use an easel, I make sure the easel is tilted slightly forward and that means that the dust is going to fall straight off if I'm painting the sky it will fall off and down into the tray nor onto the painting that I'm going to do underneath. If I'm painting as I will be later today on uh, just on a wall, a board up against a wall, sometimes it might have a little tilt, I'm just careful about that. But either way I want to catch the dust that's going to fall off because dust can be a hazard in your workspace. You can do it a number of ways, you can just get some uh, baby wet wipes and lay some down underneath your painting the dust will fall down and collect in that. Another easy way is just take a piece of cardboard, score two lines across it, fold it like so and you have a little tray then you just sit your painting inside that tray. Obviously make sure that the bottom piece does not come up above your painting or it makes it hard to paint. But that's a really good way. If you're going to have a permanent setup with an easel or a, somewhere where you leave your paintings up all the time I'll just take a piece of tape, this works well, masking tape, any sort of tape, and I tape over the edges like so, and that will make a very solid little tray 
that I can just keep. But if you are going to be packing things away, just leaving it like this and folding it works well because then you can store it flat. So that's your, um, and, and when you collect the dust, I just take it and put it straight into the rubbish or outside. Um, or the other thing I do is tip it into a baby jar and then later on I can make a, a new pastel out of the, the dust that I've collected. That's quite an economical thing to do. And you get some really nice colours you can't buy. So I've got my paper, I've got my tray. Um, I When I'm painting, I've I've got trays of pastels, a lot of pastels in there, and I'm going to be choosing just some for the painting. And as I go, if I put them straight back into the box, I'm going to get a bit confused about which ones I've used when I want to use them later on. So you can just use a little dish like this as you paint, put the pastels in there, and then you'll know which ones you're using. It's like a palette, as if you were using watercolour or acrylic or oil. That's your palette. What I like to do also is put some semolina or, or rice, something small and granular in the bottom and then as I put the pastels in and I might be taking a few days to do a painting if it's a large one, I'll put the pastels in and then if I need to clean them I just put the lid on, give it a shake and that grittiness of the, pa of the semolina or the rice will clean the pastels for me so that's another good tip when you're setting up. Now, if you haven't worked with pastels much, you might not have realised how dirty your hands can get. If you're like me, you don't really care that much, although I work with patients uh, during my professional life. So sometimes I will use a hand shield, and this is actually called liquid gloves hand shield. You just squeeze it under your hands, rub it in, work it under your fingernails, and then when you're working, the dust doesn't stick to you. That's good if you're like me, and um, sometimes you use your hand and your fingers to blend bits, areas of your painting. So some of that you may or may not like. Some people, or artists work with gloves, I really don't like gloves. I like to feel what I'm doing, I'm very tactile. The other thing you're going to need is some clean rag or kitchen towel because as you're working the pastels are going to get dirty and you, when you finish a thing you can just swipe across it and take off any uh, other colours that have got on there mixed into it so that you keep your pastels clean and you don't have to go through a big process of cleaning them regularly. So we've got all that. Next thing you want of course is your reference so it might be a photo or I often work from uh, using a tablet because the colours are great and I can zoom in and zoom out for detail. So have your reference ready. And then as I'm blocking in I want to use some hard pastels or maybe some charcoal so I'll have that ready and then the pastel range. So you've prepared your paper, you've got a dust trap, if you want to protect your hands you have, you've got a palette ready, you've got your reference material ready, you're all set to paint. Thanks for joining me, I'll see you next time. Bye for now.